Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial. Um, this is about the basics of Liquid, but really understanding the game mechanics of Liquid in the game and avoiding mistakes. So first thing first, Liquid is Liquid. It goes, it's affected by gravity. So in this particular case, you have a junction here um, some of the liquid will go right through, through to because of momentum. Uh, and then most of it is going to fall down here. In fact, the liquid that goes into this pipe will most likely backflow and fall back down. So this is going to get like half filled and going to stay half filled until this one is fully filled. So let's power this up. This is a standard uh, water extractor, 120 per minute. You can see this is already filled up. And now this one is going to start to fill up. This one a little bit as well, but not more than that. Um, now this is 120. So the flow to the, this should never exceed 120. But that's one of the mistakes that other people do is that the flow actually includes both the forward and backward momentum. Considering that um, liquid flows in the form of waves, you'll see this number go kind of wild. Um, so if you want to make sure to have enough room in a pipe Never have 300 um, liquid go through a 300 pipe or 600 liquid go through a 600 pipe. You need to leave yourself a little bit of leftover. Uh, you can see here it keeps going up and down. It, it really behaves as a wave. Um, can we see here maybe the flow going above 120? I don't see it. It's kind of nuts, huh? I'll try see what happens if I just clear the network. I really want to show you the number going above 120. That's kind of a an important point here. What about this one? Oh, there you go. There it is. See, that was that's way above 120 right there. Um, so there it is. Never put too much water, uh, never put too much liquid in a pipe. You gotta imagine the backflow. So, to, un to understand the principle of, you know, what happens if you actually do put uh, 300 in a 300 pipe or 600 in a 600 pipe, well, you're gonna get a clog in the system. Sort of like this. When both uh, machines push their screws at the same time and they both reach the merger at the same time it's get pushed back that's the same principle it's the backflow um, even though like belts they go one way pipes can go both ways um, but yeah that's the principle of backflow so in this particular case if I was trying to push uh, uh, like, I'm trying to push 50 here, but if I was trying to push 60 through, uh, 60 in total through these belts, because of the of this um, interaction where the merger is, uh, I would have actually an accumulation inside the machines. So, and because it would be maxed out in the belt itself, that accumulation would be stuck there forever. Well, the same thing can happen with the pipes. Um, that's why you need to use lesser, like you, you need to use pipes that have extra space in them. Never max out a, a pipe. Like if you, if you use a 600 pipe like this, don't put five water extractor because that's gonna reach exactly 600. Put four, and then if you need a fifth one, put that on a different pipe. Always just build more pipes, it's fine. Just build more. So, 
The next thing that we need to talk about is the head lift. Um, so any machine, any given machine like this, like a refinery, blender, anything that has a liquid coming out of it, the maximum head lift is always uh, 10 meter. Like uh, it, see it, it says right there, 10 meter upward, head lift 10 meter. So every machine always has 10 meter. Now, that doesn't mean that liquid won't go above. This here is 4 meter, 8, 12, 14. We've got water here. But, we don't have a lot. What's actually happening is it's going to push upward at maximum strength for 10 meter. And then it's going to keep pushing at a reduced strength. Which means if you're trying to push 200 liquid, you might actually receive 80 per minute. But it, it's still going to go. Just don't be fooled. If you're trying to go really high up, you really want to make sure that you have enough head lift. So in this particular case, I would add a pump right here. Connect it. And then you can see it is now working. And this will indicate you how much it's actually working. And you can see here, this is really, really high. So that pump was necessary. And now this is starting to fill up. So never underestimate head lift. Always make sure that you have enough. It's not a bad thing to have too much head lift. You don't need to worry about having too much head lift. There's no such thing. And uh, something that's pretty neat is uh, you can see here the... Um, that blue thing going up, it's actually going to tell you just how far it can go. So like if I, um, if instead I build a Mark 1, then see you have this little blue thing here. That means to complete the procedure, to go higher than this point I need another pump here and it's gonna clip there automatically so that's a very good way of knowing do I have enough head lift well if you have one of these no you don't you need to add another pump um, one thing if you have a very long horizontal pipe and then it goes up that indicator why might not appear it only appears if you have a considerably straight area of pipes um, so that's just one thing to consider there so the next thing that I want to talk about is something that is explained on aluminum production aluminum production is the first production where you actually have to worry about water as well liquid as a byproduct so that's when you actually have to, um, they call it throughput. Um, so you have input here and then you have output here. The both together is called throughput. Um, so you have to worry about how much you're injecting in. Now I've seen a lot of people, what they do is they add a valve and they limit the valve to whatever number they need but you don't have to i have never used a valve and i have never had any issue with any of my aluminum production as long as there is um, a constant flow of bauxite going in and all your materials that you need um, and as long as there's no power, um, uh, as long as your power grid holds, <laughs> um, you won't have any problem. The problem that can occur when you put too much water is that this output here, 
gets filled up. And because the rest of the of the pipe is completely full with water, it can't escape. And if this gets backed up, the refinery will stop producing. So that's why it's important to have exactly the right amount of water that you need. Now there's multiple different ways because of the uh, regular recipes and alternate recipes. The, the thing that you need to worry is not which recipe you're using, just do the math. So this is 200 minus 120. I need 80 water per minute. So let's go over here. Um, very, very simple stuff. Just set, the, set that to 80. I know that the clock speed appears as a bad percentage. Um, this is the act. This is not the actual number. This is just a display issue. The actual number continues like I think it's like 12 number after the decimal, and the game will actually produce exactly 80 per minute. It's it's, uh, it's not gonna bug out on you. Just trust the number, not the one that you see. Imagine, just trust the number that it's, it's in there. And then the water is going to go in. We're going to start to see here uh, the production begin. Um, and really, it's that simple. You don't need to worry about it. Just make sure that you have a constant flow of resources. And it's going to work. Um, make sure that if you have like a, an elevated setup or things like that, just, you know, same thing, make sure you have enough head lift, uh, think about gravity, like what's going to go where first. You don't need to use valves. You don't need to use any um, things like uh, fluid buffer, stuff like that. Fluid buffer really... There is a way to use it as a monitoring device and it's useful for train stations but in the end if you if you're having like a, a pipe go through a fluid buffer and then out on the other side it just makes it a very large pipe there's it's it's pointless like you don't need to use fluid buffer and as you can see here the liquid is not uh, accumulating in the machine the liquid is good here and uh, um, I know I had a little bit of extra liquid here but uh, the excess is already gone and it's not accumulating in there either so the machine is not underfed no water accumulation at all as soon as the process has fully begun, you're good. You can just leave it and nothing will ever happen. And I can tell you that because I have had a save file in update 8 that was 1100 hours. I've never had issues. Not once. And that's the way that I've done all my aluminum setups. Um, you know, recipe can vary, uh, recipes can vary, uh, but all in all, it's always the same thing in the end. It's just you know, the way the liquid works, it's always the same thing. It's just a matter of getting the right numbers. That's it, that's all. So, um, I think that's everything already. That's the basics. For more advanced systems, um, I'm gonna, like I said, I have another video tutorial. Uh, for things like uh, nuclear production, same principle applies. Just make sure you're producing the right amount of uh, sulfuric acid, for example. Not too much, not too little. Um, there's no... There's no need to... Like, I've seen a lot of people, what they do, because they're scared of having that water backflow into the system. Uh, what they do is they burn... They package the water and sink it, or they burn it 
at a coal power plant, you don't need to do that. You can flow it back in. The only thing that I'm going to say about this, remember that this needs 200 water per minute. You are producing 120 here, you are producing 80 here, which means that your flow here is going to be average of 200 per minute. So make sure that you use the correct pipe. Even though you're actually only producing 80 from here, um, that doesn't mean that you can have like uh, uh, four of these uh, and and that's going to be like 320 and you're like, oh yeah, let, uh, let's just do one Mark II pipe and it's going to be fine. No, it's not because you also have extra flow from here. Um, it can create a clog. So yeah. Go check out my advanced video for more tips on the liquid. I'm gonna talk about uh, weird things that you can do basically with uh, m more interesting stuff with gravity. Like uh, the biggest example would be how to actually get 600 out of a uh, pure oil node. Um, Actually, I think that's going to be the title of the video. So, alright. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Have a move.